Patriot Campers, we produce products that enable people to live a lifestyle based around adventuring and exploring, getting out and seeing the country, doing things that you couldn't normally do and focused on the family environment. I'm Justin Monisalvo and I'm the Managing Director of Patriot Campers. We live and breathe every single product that comes out of this factory. Everything that we manufacture has been born from a design by people who actually live this lifestyle. The kids, all three of them, will be involved in the business. The twins, since they were about nine years old, you know, they've been coming into the factory over the school holidays. They're very mechanically minded, and my daughter, she's action woman. She's the lifestyle just sums up Mia. This, this is what she is all about. When they're at home with mum, they're your average kids. When they're out with me, they're, they're one of the boys. They're my best mates. For me, Patriot Campers is all about culture. And it's culture in the lifestyle that we promote. And it's culture with my team. Culture with my family. This is what we do. You know, we don't do anything else. We live this lifestyle. We have a dynamic team and we've got a lot of different personalities. I think the world wants to see the success of the business. I push all of my gear to the limit because I need to know that the product I'm promoting, that I'm, I'm sticking by my word. If I ever got that phone call from a customer where something had gone massively wrong, a big structural failure, I'd probably close the business down. That's how personally I'd take it. So I test my gear and I push it harder than anybody will push it. I think there's people who claim that they test like we do, but nobody tests like we do. And if I can't break this, there's no way you can. Sheet metal was my livelihood, but I never thought I'd be building gear like this. Every week, we turn tons of steel into rolling works of art. Some of the toughest gear in the world comes out of this factory. Building this gear is only half the fun. No one tests like we do. That's it, mate. My passion has taken my family to the edges of the earth. Life's the game. We know how to play it. Patriot Games. Justin is leading a convoy R&D trip to the northernmost tip of Australia, Cape York. And he's taking his brothers, his twin boys, his dad, and a few of his mates along for the ride. The time away from the company is, is the thing that I struggle with the most. I genuinely enjoy being here. I'm usually the first person here every day and, and majority of the time I'm the last one to leave. And it's not because I have to, it's because I want to be here. Going away on these trips, leaving family and work behind, has never been a problem for me before. I love being able to get away. A little bit different this time around, I've now got a son. To go out and experience what you're selling um, is what you need, and by doing that, you can talk to people about your experiences with the trailers and actually be able to tell them how they work and, and how they perform. The best part about getting away and camping is exactly that. The fact that we get to get away. To get away from the everyday life, get away from our businesses and just spend time as a family unit. Boys, everyone on channel? Yeah, yeah mate. So, Michael, Kate. Yeah, we're on. We come from a massive family and I'm one of the younger ones. So sometimes it seems a little bit harder for me to get to do some of the fun stuff that the older guys do. I may miss out at the start, but I know that at some point it will be my turn. Let's do it. The boys carry out their final checks. A full setup now could save them when they're further north and miles from help. Well, having all the boys grown in front of my eyes and the girls has just been quite an experience to see their personalities develop, their achievements grow. 
been the father of such a large family, it is quite exciting. There's never a dull moment. Growing up with Dad and going camping has been really great. It's taught me a lot of life lessons and um, a lot of techniques that I've been able to pass on to my kids. Justin ends the first day of travel so that the crew can experience the Daintree River ferry crossing in the morning light. I really wanted everyone to see the first crocodile sign there, you know, that big attention, crocodiles. You've got the Daintree on the other side, the Great Barrier Reef is to your east. You know, you've got two world heritage listed areas meeting each other. There's nowhere else in the world like that. So I wanted the boys to have the full experience of crossing that ferry and seeing the Daintree in the full light. Crossing the Daintree can be easy going compared to where the boys are headed. But the wet roads and track can still be hazardous. And Justin has some advice for Tommy, the least experienced member of the crew. Mate, we'll go down to probably about 25 on the, um, on the trailer. We'll go a little bit harder in the car, mate. Okay. We've had about 400 mil of rain up here. Yeah, right. And before we hit that slush, yeah. and it's gonna be slush. Justin at work is, is so motivated. And as soon as you get him outside of work and we're doing some R&D, it like doubles. We just want to get as much tyre surface area as we can. Yeah, give the trailer a bit more grip, mate, so you don't end up with it on its lid. Hey, Justin, you got a copy, mate? Yeah, mate, gotcha. How rad does this place look, eh? Mate, this joint is out of control. Wait till we get down to the dirt. One thing I love about my job and being a cameraman is the amazing places you go and the really cool people you meet. It's pretty awesome when your office could be the outback, the ocean, or any of these wild destinations. And really, I wouldn't want to work anywhere else or have it any other way. The good thing about the boys is they generally always ask me to come along. It's by invitation, I feel quite privileged. They seem to enjoy having me around, so it's a, it's a great feeling. The Daintree Rainforest is over 125 million years old and visited by more than 400,000 people every year. It's also the first chance the boys have to get their gear wet. Most of the fun of going to any of these iconic locations is the trip there. It's usually the best fun trying to get there rather than when we're actually there. If you're in Bobby's cart, everything has a place and he drives it really safely to make sure he doesn't hit any trees or branches overhanging. When he's in my car, he trashes it and treats it like a rental. He gives no care or thought to anything that he goes through. Well, really, going to any destination, it's always about the journey, the preparation, the excitement, the preemption of what's going to happen. It really is the journey, it's not the destination most of the time. We're pulling all the gear for the first time. Joe's sitting at about seven ton. I'm loaded up somewhere around six ton. Ready to go. Give this a shot. Getting through that dane train up some of those steep climbs. Nobody was really prepared for, you know, the low range. You start getting halfway up those hill climbs, there's moss all over the concrete, wheels start turning all the weight on the back, the trucks are under full load. You can feel everything creaking and straining and starting to move. And, and that's, when, um, that's when we knew we got a big adventure in front of us just because of the gear that we're hauling up there. Okay. I'll come up now, yeah? Nice to be when you're up there. All right, coming up. Tommy, I hit the bitumen at probably like 80 k's and then just instantly down to 20. On your way up, Tommy? Yeah, I'm on my way. 
Drive the wheels off it, Dave. First and foremost, this is an R&D trip for Patriot campers. And the boys are quickly reminded that they're towing some serious trailers with some serious payloads. And it's only the first day. Each time we go away, I'm always confronted with something different, something new, um, something I've got to learn, you know, whether it's winching or, you know, doing steep climbs. Pull off it. It really puts the butterflies back in my stomach and, and that's kind of what keeps me going time and time against these places because it's something new, it's something different and definitely puts me outside my comfort zone. You've got to be careful up here, right? We're going to be seeing a lot of that and the further north that we go, the more of them there's going to be, buddy. Oh, yeah. Watch out for your brother. As the crew make their way north through the Daintree, Justin has a few spots in mind that he's keen to show the rest of the boys. All right, here we are, lines down. Who's coming for a beer? Going away with Justin sometimes can be a bit tough. I don't think he actually enjoys sleeping sometimes, whereas I prefer to have a little bit of sleep in. I'm so hungry and thirsty, right? I'm down for a beer or two. As long as it's cold, I'll have it. He'll be there at the crack of dawn to get us moving again. Well, we've got a few hours to kill, boys, so let's, um, let's have some lunch and a few beers. The historic Lion's Den Hotel is packed with history and the walls are covered in the signatures of over a century's worth of visitors. And there's really no better place to stop for a cold beer. As the night rolls on, Justin holds a captive audience as he recaps the day. You can just, can just stop and then start going backwards because I only have the brake controller on two. Hit the brake controller, pull the handbrake, jam the thing in reverse, let the clutch out, then go... So one thing a lot of people don't know about me is I'm, I'm one of eight kids. I've got six brothers, two sisters, and my old man's been into camping, well, our whole lives. As a family unit, we all have very strong opinions. That's just the way we're brought up. Now, I'm the oldest. I'll listen to what they all have to say, but at the end of the day, if I know it's wrong, I'll make sure that I'm the one that has the last say. You got Jamie, who's the oldest. He's the know-it-all, always right, won't listen to anyone else. Justin, the one always on the move, wanting to do something, a little bit angry at times. Myself, don't really care about too much, just there to have a good time. And then Chase, he's the youngest, bigger, angry little brother. Joe's brother Johnny has missed his flight to Cairns, so the boys make a detour via Cooktown to pick him up. And Justin doesn't waste an opportunity to give the twins a quick history lesson. As we rolled into Cooktown, the twins started talking about Captain Cook and the Endeavour and everything that they learn at school, or Cooktown, and they kind of put two and two together. Dad, is this Captain Cook? So I explained to them the story about Captain Cook coming in, hitting the reef, the Endeavour coming into the Endeavour River. Captain Cook spent a couple of months there repairing the ship. They had the first interaction with an Indigenous tribe there, and the boys got to see all that memorabilia. We showed them where the river was, had a look at some of the icons around Cooktown. I had a really good moment there with the boys, where it kind of started gelling together on what this trip is all about. My grandkids, Ashton and Christian, watch them grow up, they are so dynamic. They are so much older than their age. They're more like my sons than my grandkids. They're, they're, they're part of the team. So, Dad, where are we going tomorrow? Well, tomorrow we roll out and we head up to the property, mate. We're gonna go for a hunt and, and chase those barra. Oh, Dad, I, I cannot wait. It's going to be awesome, mate. We're going to have a ball. Now that Johnny's caught up with the rest of the crew, it's time to leave Cooktown and the boys say goodbye to any of the creature comforts from home. It's time to go bush. There really is nothing more enjoyable than taking off and going out and exploring the Aussie Outback. It's nice to really get out and see what we have around this country. The Patriot Campers R&D crew have spent the night in Laura, inland of Cooktown, 
and everyone's up early, excited to hit the red dirt of the development road. After picking up the last member of the crew in Cooktown, the boys are headed off-road to really test the limits of the gear they're towing. And the further north they go, the harder it's going to be. Here we are, the real Cape York, red dirt. Joe, how's that trailer handling back there, mate? Sending them real good. Yeah, enjoyed it. Mate, all that dust is going to make it easy travelling convoy on this trip. No dust, eh? Yeah, I'm all good. How are you, Bobby? Yeah, we're fine back here. Not too much so far. That little bit of rain they've had seems to have worked. Well, this is where the adventure starts, boys. This is the, the opening to everything. We'll get up here to the property, we'll get into car and pick up old mate and then we'll, um, we'll head out towards the coast, yeah? How far out of Cowan is the property? Oh mate, it's about 100 k's, but we'll have to see how the track, um, what the track's like on the way in there. It's going to be a bit of a battle getting up to, um, up to the river, I think. That's just me, all the way up from the adventure. <laughs> Breakfast sounds good, though. Breakfast definitely sounds good. Benny, Tommy, what do you reckon you came for a feed? Mate, we're starving back here. The mule is ready to roll. Alright, well let's do it. We'll get up the road a little bit, we'll pull up, have a quick feed and then we'll uh, head out, yeah? The convoy are well equipped with onboard kitchens and after a few hours of driving, the crew stop for a quick feed before heading towards the station where they'll set up camp for the night. Another pan for the eggs or you just gonna cook? Even though we're a group of brothers, we're also a group of mates. There's one thing that happens with mates, you always feed it to each other. Once the banter starts, it's one in, all in. Everybody will gang up on one person. Some days it's your turn, sometimes it's somebody else's turn. But at the end of the day, everyone has a laugh about it. It always works out. The boys keep in contact over two-way radio. And like most road trips, the banter quickly turns to joking around. This time at Tommy's expense over an ex-girlfriend who made him a little homesick on his last trip. 11.52 a.m. Hey Remy, it's me, it's Tommy. I uh, just got out of the shower. I thought that maybe I heard the phone ring. 1 p.m. Oh, hey Remy, it's Tommy here. You know I'm supposed to be leaving on the trip with the boys today to go up to Cape for two weeks. Look, if you really don't want me to go, I won't go. I have checked my phone a couple of times. I've noticed that uh, you may have tried to call me back. I don't know if it was you or not, but just give me a call and let me know because I will cancel the trip. I will if you want to go for lunch. You've led me on to believe that we were something special and now here I am standing on the Gold Coast and you don't want me to be with you. Just call me back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's funny, when the boys do actually do battle, it escalates to a real boiling point, but it subdues just as quickly. So that's a good thing about it. They get over their differences pretty quickly, but they do get very loud. Justin's motivation at work is unbelievable. And, and that's why we've got such a really well-driven team. Everyone wants to know what he's doing and everyone wants to you know, catch up with him and, and get a little bit more of a buzz from him. And to see your friend being successful, um, I, it, there's nothing better than I want to see. I feel some sort of responsibility to all of the team. Everybody's made such a massive effort to get up here to show them something that they're not going to see if they were to do this trip on their own. And it's fine to see all the tourist destinations, but to really experience Cape York, you've got to get off the track. You've got to get out there to the places that people have never been before. So my mate came through, he said, not a drama, roll down to the station. I know the property really well. Still the same situation, very, very wet down here. So we can't access all of the property, but hopefully we'll still get to catch that elusive barra. 
Look, the most enjoyable thing for me to take with us on a trip is a boat. I love being able to put a boat in the water and go out and flick a line. Look, anywhere we go, if there's fish there, I want to be the first one to catch it. Once we arrived out on the station, the property that I know quite well, I've been here a couple of times before. We went for a drive out to the camp that I normally stay at. And this camp, mate, there is no way we were going to get a camper trailer through there, let alone the big toy haulers. So we've headed down to another part of the property that I've actually never been to before. We got pointed in the right direction, and we had a hell of a time getting down here. The unsealed roads are wet and muddy after some recent rain, and all that water could spell trouble for the boys in more ways than one. All right, boys, so here we are. Welcome to the station. The, um, just went for a quick drive out to the camp where we usually stay, and, mate, it's too wet. There's no way we're going to get the big toy haulers in, so we're going to go and camp down near the, um, down near the river, yeah? That's the plan. Glamour day, glamour couple of days. Hopefully we'll get out to that reef um, and we'll get that barra in here as well. Sounds good. Well, mate, before we're saying that the barra and the fresh water is not too big here on this property, but you get the ones out near the salt water and they're massive. Yeah, well, they're the ones we've been chasing. And with the amount of water lying around as well, there's been crocs all over the property too, yeah? So everyone keep an eye out. Station hands, dog got taken um, just the other day by a croc down the creek just down here. Yeah, he was saying $2,500 cattle dog. So, uh, so it's real, boys. The crocs around here, I'm telling you now, nowhere near water, OK? Yeah, you stay away from the water. Yeah. Now, when you travel to northern Australia, and especially Cape York, there are some dangerous animals around, and the saltwater crocodile is something that's always on the back of your mind. Now, the station owner's dog got taken in front of the house a couple of days ago, and that's because of the amount of water that's lying around. The crocs can access the whole property. But the reality of it is, you just need to use some common sense and keep an eye out for each other. Benny, you boys caught Mango Jackson for? No, Jack's one of those fish that I really would like to catch. Yeah, normally they're pretty prolific up this end, so hopefully there's a few snags we can hit the tinnies. Well, they're meant to be one of the best fight, aren't they? You know, I think people might might question my full drive skills coming from England, but uh, you know, I think after after doing a lot lot of full driving now, how are we looking up there, guys? Definitely up there. I reckon I reckon I'm close behind Justin. Um, I reckon I'll give him a run for his money anyway. Tommy is the most inexperienced tourer in the group, and the Essex-born Patriot Campers salesman is about to make his first big mistake of the trip. Tommy's driving a Toyota Hilux that has been affectionately dubbed the Mule. It's capable enough, as long as you stay on the tracks. Yeah, on the Mule's box. <laughs> Can we get a driver in that car? <laughs> Tommy, don't dig yourself in, mate. Um, put into reverse and see if you can just back out straight, mate. If you start spinning real hard, just stop, dude. I'll come back and winch you out. No, no, no. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> yeah, it's over. Chase can pull him out with the engine too. Yeah, Chase, you got recovery here there, mate. Yeah, he's got some stuff, he's in now. Just put a bow shackle on the back of that X2 um, and whip him out. Does it have a tow hitch? No, it doesn't have hitch. What's it got? The two points, we've got to link them together. So you need the TJM set. It's all soft, enough for being on this track. You know, in England, the probably most full driving I've ever done is um, going up a curb of a McDonald's drive through. Um, you know, and being in Australia now for a few years, I reckon, um, I reckon my full drive skills are definitely up there. Um, you know, if you were to rate me, I'd probably definitely give myself a nine, nine out of 10. Where's your snatch trap? You said you've got one. Yeah, but it's getting mud on it. You said you've got one. You've done this before. Not like this, but it should work. It is a tree trunk protector, but it should be right. 
Look, I'm no four-wheel drive expert, but it is pretty funny sometimes watching some of these beginners try and get themselves out of sticky situations. It's always good to go in there and show them how it's done. See, in England, all my friends are bankers. So they live in London. They work in the banks, they work the nine to five. They ring me up and they say, how, hey, Tommy, how's it going in Australia? You having fun? I'm like, yeah. They don't have things like this in England, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay. Right back. Stop. 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 All right, Tommy, you ready? Ready. Stop. That was a textbook uh, recovery. Textbook recovery. Stay off the soft, the uh, soft stuff, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> Wherever you can. <laughs> I've got to say, if I showed an Englishman what a swag looked like, I think they'd run a mile and they definitely wouldn't be jumping it. So I think I'll do all right for an Englishman. We don't need no land cruisers. The boys know that when they're towing this kind of weight through soft, wet tracks, it's important to keep your foot down and power through. When in doubt, power out. You reckon we should walk it first? Nope, on with you, let's go, let's drive it. Now you sure we shouldn't walk this? Yeah, I'm sure. We shouldn't just give it a go, give it a little walk? Yeah. All right, we'll just drive it. Yeah. That's what we do, because we're boss. Yes, we are. And you know what's going to stop the black truck? Nothing. Nothing. Not a thing. Absolutely nothing is going to stop Nothing stops. The black truck. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Not a thing. You're done. Perfect. Easy. This is too easy. I don't know. This isn't even fun anymore. <laughs> Give me the 200 back. Nah. This thing's awesome. I love it. Chase might be six, possibly seven years younger than me. I'm not quite sure what it is. But at times, I actually think he's my older brother. Even though he drives the Hilux, the little baby car of the group, he's always prepared to put it through his paces. I haven't got a Land Cruiser yet, but the Hilux is getting me by for now. It's small, but it's cheap to run, and it never has a drama getting anywhere that the other cars do. The biggest concern of the whole trip was obviously going to be the two Super Tourers with the two big toy haulers. But look, those trucks, they are absolutely something else. The trucks ate up those trucks. What really surprised me, though, was the little Hilux, the mule, towing the 470, got into a couple of situations. X1 had a couple of situations. And even the X2, I think, the boys were behind me. I didn't capture the whole lot. You know, we were a fair way in front, scouting the track. But look, everyone performed, and I think all the boys had a ball getting in there. The muddy roads into camp are gruelling, and the boys are pretty excited to set up camp and unload the gear. Everybody had a job to do, and it was really funny because no one really discussed anything. There was just gear coming off trailers left, right and centre. Quad bikes everywhere, the Polaris side-by-sides, there's tinnies and outboard motors. And look, this is what it's all about. This is what we live for. It's not just about the four-wheel driving. When you get out there into those remote locations, there's so much exploration to be done. And if you don't have all that gear with you, you miss out on a lot of what's going on with the country around you. Come on, bounce that over. Bounce that over. Well, it's funny because when, when I'm with the boys, they always seem to want to take control of the driving. I personally enjoy the driving aspect as much as being a passenger, but I also take a lot of enjoyment out of watching my boys driving me around and then being excited about what we actually are doing. So it works both ways. Being a passenger and being a driver, I like both. The boys are keen to get everything off the trailers to start exploring, so everyone's pitching in. 
Now I'm a dirt bike guy. I've been riding since I was two and a half. Now on these trips, we don't always have a dirt bike. If it's got an engine, I always want to be part of it. Sometimes Jamie might be a little bit rough around the edges. It's um, hard to get a, a straight answer out of him. If you want something done, he'll give you three words and that's it. But if I have any dramas with anything mechanical or I need to help finding a solution to a problem, he's the one I go see. So one of the things that always seems to spin me out about my boys is when we're at home, they're your normal average 12 year old kids. When we get them out here in these sorts of situations and they're hanging around with all the older boys, something changes. They're in there, they're part of the crew. They've got a little job to do, they're over in the corner, they're setting up the boat trailers. The boys are all checking in on them to make sure that they're all right. But you know what? Those two know what's going on. They're so mechanically minded and they've been doing this for a long time, they just fit in as part of the crew. When we take the twins away on these sort of trips, yeah. it's no different to taking away a younger brother, an older brother or even one of our mates. They really are one of the boys. Just go forward real slow, Chase. One thing about Justin, whether he's at work or whether he's out playing, he gives 100% dedication. There isn't that humongous amount of difference between him being at work and being out at play. He always seems to be very, very focused on the mission ahead. From tinnies and fold-up boat trailers to quads and buggies, there's a lot of gear to unload. But the crew have everything off and camp set up in no time. It's time to explore nature's fun park. While some have taken the tinnies and headed off to explore the surrounding creeks, Justin and the boys set off on the ATVs to gather firewood for the night. Big, big logs though. Let's go in there and have a look. Maybe we'll find a pig too. Yeah. Now we've done a little bit of exploration, but everybody was involved once again. There's really no talking going on. Everyone's got a job to do. Now, as any camper would know, the key to a good campsite has got to be a good fire, and we always put the effort in. We go the extra mile, don't go anywhere without a chainsaw, and we have a lot of good nights around those fires. After a less than successful fish in the nearby waterholes, the boys regroup back at camp and, with the fire going, decide to use what's left of the daylight to explore around camp. The thing that I like to spend most of my time on is the quad. I love going out there, seeing how stuck we can get it and just absolutely thrashing it. It's even better when it's Justin's gear. Justin's raced side-by-side -side buggies at competition level. And with his son Christian navigating, he leads the convoy of ATVs. Gotta get across that. But Justin decides to ignore his navigator's directions. Sometimes Dad's not always right. Dad, fast, fast, fast. Now we found a lot of these little veins running across the salt pans and when the water runs off of there, the bottoms of these things seem absolutely endless. Are you going to put it in reverse? Yep. Right. Just cruise it out, mate. So there's a lot of stuff that Justin tries to get through that a lot of people think you can't, but I've never seen him back down from anything. Now we found this one creek that we particularly wanted to get across because it gave us direct access down to where we wanted to head. Do you want to pin? No. Cool, nothing full drive. I told, I told you. Drop. All the way down. 
That's it, all the way down. We're up to mud to our waist. We've got the Polaris jammed up that many times in the afternoon. Constant recoveries. Christian, we're gonna get across. Oh yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't be a hero anymore if I didn't, would I? Yeah. The energy he puts into the team is like you've never seen. You know, he's making sure he's pushing everything to its limits. Nope, that didn't work. So close. All the boys looked at it and they said it was impossible. And you know what? They were right. You've got to accept defeat sometimes. After giving up on crossing the creek, the crew find another way around. But it's not long before Justin finds himself stuck in the unpredictable landscape and it's up to Joe to pull him out. Having all this gear up here with us, it adds a whole nother dimension to what we're doing. We can really get out into those remote parts of the property that you would never access in a four wheel drive. Trying to get one of those super tourers across the salt pans, coming in at about three ton, mate, you've got absolutely no chance. The Monte Salvo family are just, you know, they're great to be around, you know, whether it's at work um, or outside of work, you know, they're just, they're, they're so much fun and, and they've got such a great family culture. Um, and that's what I like about them, you know, the, the, everything they do, they involve the family. After days on the road, the boys are taking the opportunity to blow off some steam. But boys will be boys and sure enough, Johnny comes unstuck. I found a muddy little patch and I started slapping a few donuts in the 900. Johnny thought he'd do exactly the same. Now he hasn't had a lot of experiences with the Polarises. I raced the season last year and I know what these things are capable of. I looked over my shoulder, I've come out of a donut doing a little bit of a fishtail and sure enough, there's Johnny on his side. Now the first thing that always goes through your mind when you see something like that is obviously, I hope nobody's injured. We knew everyone was okay and we kind of milked it for a little bit. They're all screaming at us to get their seat belts off because they obviously want to get out. We thought we'd leave them in there for a couple of minutes. It was so slow, we're like, oh, we're going, we're going, we're going, oh, we're going. With the buggy now the right way up and everyone safe and sound, the boys decide to call it a day and head back to camp for the night. Well, the one thing about all my sons is the excitement is such varied personalities. They're all dynamics in their own rights, but they are so different. Even when we get together in a cook-up, there's continuous battling about who's the best cook. And they're all great, but they all specialise in, seems to be mm -hmm. in different fields. Coming from a big family, meal time's always been super important. But it's completely different cooking in the kitchen than cooking out in the bush. We try and keep everything as simple as possible. We cook everything in the campfire, we utilise all that wood that we've collected, and there's just something about sitting around that fire with the family and having a meal. Next time on Patriot Games. The Patriot campers crew are on their way to Cape York and the boys get a chance to explore North Queensland from the ground. You know where it is or no? And from the air. Justin gives the twins an environmental lesson they'll never forget. Watch it, Yanni, watch it. And the hunt for the legendary Barramundi is on. Oh. But when they're not biting for Rob, Justin has a plan to find the ultimate untouched fishing spot with his old man. Oh, look at that 